What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve problem 2.16 of Griffith's 4th edition. The problem reads, A long coaxial cable, as in figure 2.26, carries a uniform volume charge density rho in the inner cylinder of radius A. A uniform surface charge density on the outer cylindrical shell reaches B. This surface charge is negative so and is of just the right magnitude that the cable as a whole is electrically neutral. Now find the electric field in each of the three regions inside, that's S less than A, between the cylinders and outside the cable. And then let's plot the function of the electric field as a function of S. Okay? So as you will notice here that we have two objects here uh, that compose the coaxial cable. By the way, this coaxial cable is the, is the has the same system or the same uh, what do you call this? The the same configuration as your usual, let's say your coaxial cable used in your antennas or used in your uh, cable TV. Okay? Now, at the center, we have a solid cylinder. So that means it carries a volume charge density rho and there's a cylindrical shell in the outside. Okay? So it, it's also mentioned here that the, uh, the whole cable is electrically neutral and the surface is negative and the inner is positive therefore okay so let's now use gauss law to calculate the electric field so let's start with the first region s less than a so for less than for s less than a the gaussian surface would be like this this is now the gaussian surface so if this is the axis, okay, this would be your S, okay? Now, from here, if you're going to let this as our uh, length temporarily, uh, the Q enclosed will now be what? Q enclosed would be rho times the volume of the cylinder which is pi s squared times l okay so therefore gauss law remember gauss law is close integral of e dot da this is equal to q and close over epsilon sum zero okay so the first thing that we calculated is the Q and close, and then we apply this. Now, because we are using a cylindrical, uh, cylindrical uh, Gaussian surface, therefore, this integral will now be reduced to simple multiplication of the electric field times the area of your Gaussian surface, uh, uh, area surface area of your Gaussian surface. But we're all going to look at two the lateral area not the end area because remember that in this configuration the electric field will be along the s hat direction okay the sides of the because this is an infinitely long long means infinitely long Okay, so that means the sides of your of your coaxial cable will not have an effect on the calculation of the electric field. Okay, so in other words, the area would be the lateral area, which is this, the perimeter of the circular of the circular base, times the length of your or the height of your cylindrical shell, uh, cylindrical Gaussian surface. So this is two pi s. And this equal to Q and close, that's rho pi S squared L divided by epsilon naught. So pi will cancel, one of the S's will cancel, L will cancel. 
So therefore, the electric field will now be equal to rho S over 2 epsilon S hat. So you will notice that the electric field varies with S vector. Okay, so if you're going to plot this, this will be the electric field. So let's say this is A, this is S, and this is B. Okay, at S equal to A, rho, uh, the electric field is constant. That is equal to rho A over 2 epsilon. So let's call that uh, E naught, so which is rho S over 2 epsilon. Okay, and it varies linearly. So this is linear. Okay, next region, region number two. Okay, region number two, okay, let me use a different uh, pen for the Gaussian surface. Region number two is this. So this will be the Gaussian surface. So again, let's call this as our L. And this will be S. So again, let's compute for D enclosed charge so in this case the enclosed charge will only be the uh, volume or the charge enclosed by the volume within this solid uh, solid cylinder or inner cylinder so that means q enclosed would be rho times the area of the uh, of the uh, inner cylinder so that's pi a squared because when we go, they're not going to consider S because beyond uh, the radius A, there's no more charge anymore because this is hollow. So this is rho A squared times L. So therefore, the electric field will now be equal to 2 pi, uh, E, with, uh, e uh, Gauss law will now be E times 2 pi uh, SL. As usual here, but what's different here would be the electric field at the enclosed charge which is rho pi a squared l over epsilon naught. So therefore the electric field will now be equal to a rho a squared because remember that pi will cancel. Okay, then l will cancel. So as you notice that the length of this uh, Gaussian surface is uh, irrelevant or is arbitrary. So anyway, the electric field is now equal to rho a squared divided by 2 epsilon s, s hat. So you will notice that the electric field varies inversely with Okay, and then lastly, for the third region, Q enclose, the region will now be the whole of this. Okay, now it's mentioned here that as a whole, the, the cable is electrically neutral. So that means, therefore, that the enclosed charge by this green Gaussian surface is equal to zero so therefore the electric field is zero amazing right very easy okay so that means beyond b the electric field is zero now what happens now between a and b so she will notice that uh when uh, when the uh when s is equal to a the electric field will be equal to rho a squared over 2 epsilon a. So that means rho a over 2 epsilon naught, which is the same as this. So that means there, there is a continuity at s equal to a. However, at s equal to b, okay, 
epsilon at E will now be equal to, so at S equal to B, and the magnitude of the electric field will now be equal to rho A squared over 2 epsilon B. Okay? So that means, which is maybe less than, you will notice that this decreases by 1 over R, uh, by 1 over S squared. So it would look something like this. By the way, this is straight line. Pardon with my drawing. Okay, and there is a con discontinuity at B. Okay, so that means at B the electric B up at at B the electric field suddenly drops outside. Okay, so that's it. That's a uh, problem two point sixteen of Griffith's fourth edition. I hope you learned something today. And I will see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.